Hi guys, this is Rebecca from angelfoods.net. Today's video tutorial is on this crazy ass cake. This is the Mad Hatter or Topsy Turvy cake, one tier, where it is indented and it's lopsided and it is a truckload of fun. Now we're going to get the uneven top. So you want a really long knife. You want a knife as big as the cake. So I've got my large serrated edge knife. You're gonna start here and you'll kind of cut at a diagonal angle to the other side. So we start the last join, slowly backwards, forwards. Just watch where your knife's going. And you're aiming to hit over this other corner. So it's gone three quarters of the way over, that's fine. And we're gonna turn it upside down and get that angle on there. And you're actually going to want to put it a little bit further over because you're going for that indented look. You don't want it straight up and down you want out a little bit further. And to join them together, you're gonna to need more buttercream. And that's to glue him on. Sorry, let me see, does that? Yeah, that coats it all. Make sure it goes out to the side a little bit further. Fantastic. All right, now we're going to carve this cake up. So we want to get those indented sides. And this is why we put the eight inch round cake board underneath. So if you flip him to the side, so you can see the cake board is giving you the space you want to cut at, because you want to cut it down to that level at an, in, at an angle. So you're aiming for the cake board, to the edge of the cake. So edge of the cake up here, cake board. So that's why you need your big ass knife. And you hold the cake board where it is. So that's why the cake's gotta be cold. You're gonna need to be able to manhandle it a bit. And we're just gonna slowly carve away. So don't aim for cutting heaps off at this stage. You can do more. I might just take it off the paper for a moment. We'll need it on the paper again later. So if you cut off less, less is more, and you can always just keep carving at it. Just cleaned up the bench, and I've actually transferred the cake onto the bigger cake board now, because I'm gonna do the crumb coat on here, I'm gonna do the final coat, and then I'm gonna fondant all on this cake board. So I'm happy to have it on the good cake board. So I've got a 10 inch round, and that's just for a really basic design. If you're looking for something a bit special, I'd go a bigger cake board and probably cover the cake board in fondant too. That would be really beautiful. You can learn how to cover cakes in, in uh, covering cake boards in fondant as well on our cake board tutorial. Now to crumb coat. So crumb coat is all about one really thin layer of either ganache or buttercream on a cake to get the next coat of ganache or buttercream onto the cake. So you need two coats on a cake to cover it in fondant, at least two. Some cakers do three. And it's just about putting that ganache on as thin as possible. So you pick up the ganache and you do a forwards backwards motion to get that ganache off the palette knife and onto the cake. And you've got to push it around. You've got to be a bit forceful with it. So I put it on baking paper just so I can spin it easy. You can put it on a turntable as well. I just happened to forget mine today, but you can do it on a, on a bench, absolutely no worries. And with the ganache, you do need to have it at a palette knife consistency. So I have given you the recipe for ganache before, and you can use it for drizzling, and you can use it for palette knifing. So it can be lots of different consistencies, and to get it to the right temperature, it's all about refrigeration and microwave. So there's a little bit of a little bit of a practice to it, I suppose, to get it to do what you want it to do. Just spin them around for you to see again. So we're nearly back to the beginning. I'm trying to cover up top to bottom. And you can see more of that shape showing through now. I love the Topsy Turvy. I just think it's so sexy. It's just so cute and fun. There's nothing else like it. All right, we just want a thin coat on the top now too. 
So because this is just a one tier or a one layer, we're not actually carving out the center of it to stack more on top. So if you want to learn how to do that, there's a two-tiered topsy-turvy video at angelfoods.net. All right, so we've got a thin layer. So you can see it's missing a little bit of cake down the center here that it goes almost like a step. So I want to fill that in with ganache because I want it to be a flat tabletop. So yes, this is the crumb coat stage, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but if I start filling it in now, that's less filling in I have to do later in the final coat. All right, that's looking better already. All right, so we'll just do a quick little wipe around. You just don't want any waves or bumps in the crumb coat because we're gonna put it in the fridge for 10 minutes, let it set, pull it out and do the final coat. And if you've got lumps in there, they're going to set in the fridge and then they're going to be harder to palette knife around later on. All right, you can see I've missed a little bit just down here. So you just pick up more on your palette knife, backwards, forwards, cover him up, scrape, scrape your palette knife off and then smear it around. All right, so now we've got all the sides done. We've just got these lips that I'm going to get rid of. So again, you scrape your palette knife off and pull it back towards the centre. All right, so I'm just warming my fondant up. So you can see here I've got some yellow fondant. So I started with the Bakel's RTR icing, which is just a white fondant, and I've coloured it up myself. So I've used the golden yellow Wilton concentrated food gel. So you need to use the Wilton food gels for colouring fondant. I've shown you that before in the other video tutorial called What is Fondant? So I coloured it yesterday and I also tylosed it yesterday. So that means I put through a tylose powder which makes the fondant easier to handle and also it um, dries quicker. So you need to have that tylose through it. And you can do it up to 24 hours beforehand. But if you are just doing it on the day of the cake, that's absolutely fine. If you colour through first, then put the tylose through, so it'll take about 15 minutes altogether. But then let it rest for about half an hour, at least half an hour, because it is a bit of an elastic. All right, we're just about there now. So you can see that I just tested the size by hovering over the top of the cake, but you are wanting 10 inches plus four inches plus eight inches. So 10, four, eight, I'm close. I'd hate to get it wrong in front of you. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more, but it will fall and stretch a little bit as you're putting it on the cake. So you do have that little bit of leeway but the other way of testing is your thickness as well. So if you don't decorate cakes very often, you want it thicker, so closer to a centimetre. If you decorate, you've decorated using fondant before, you can go a bit thinner. So you can go half a centimetre. You can also get down to quarter of a centimetre, but for a topsy-turvy cake, I wouldn't recommend it because you've got such a height and a corner that goes down inwards, if there's a higher likelihood of the weight of the fondant ripping and tearing at this point. So, so do keep it a little bit thicker than you probably normally would. So I'd go half a centimetre, which is where I'm at now. So I might stop messing with it. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a close up to show you how I'm gonna fondant cover this cake. Got the cake in the center on this clean baking paper. I've got my tools nice and handy. I'll just pop them to the side. All right, so I'm gonna peel back the first top of the mat. You've seen this before in the other mat tutorial. So you've got it attached to the second layer and it's not going anywhere. So you can help to place it on the cake. You've actually got a little bit of leeway. All right, 
So I want it more to the big side so I've got enough fondant to cover that cake and it will stretch a little bit. All right, I think that's gonna be it. Then to detach the fondant, you just peel back the mat and it'll start falling away. You can see, hopefully, a bit of gloss on there too. It looks amazing. So you just keep peeling it away and that's how you detach it from the mat. Now you want to start with the top first. You want to work quickly and you want to get rid of any possible air bubbles. So you've got to fluff the skirt, it's called. So you're lifting the fondant up and allowing any air to escape. And you use a fondant smoother to do this. And you can see that the fondant has actually big, I did roll it out big enough for it to cover the whole cake. So this would be the time that it would start stretching with gravity. You'd encourage it to come down if you didn't quite have enough on this side, you'd gently encourage it to, to thin out a little bit. So I'm just going to do the sides now and I'm just starting by going down one inch. You don't go all the way down on one side. And you keep fluffing the skirt. So this is called fluffing the skirt. And that's because of all these pleats down here. You want to get rid of those pleats. So you can do this on a cake turntable if you've got one or a Lazy Susan. That's why I've got this baking paper. I can just use it to turn the cake around. And sometimes I can just push the cake like this quite gently and it'll spin by itself. Just keep fluffing. So the, the difficult thing will be getting rid of these pleats without adding creases to your fondant work, to your cake. And that just takes patience and you're encouraging it to go to the shape you want. So I'm about two inches down now. Now I'm gonna to go to three inches. Okay, so there's a pleat or a crease forming there so I'm just gonna flatten it out with my fingers and then smooth down again. There we are. Let's put a little border on it. I call that a snake border and you can decorate this in any way. So you can put flowers on top, edible or fake, you could put um, bows on there, you can put toys on there, anything really, sky's the limit. Did you want to see some more examples of a topsy-turvy? Here you go. So that was the one tiered topsy-turvy cake. I know it's a little bit time consuming and it's a little bit hard with the sculpting, but you can see well worth the effort. Now, if you wanna see more of Angel Foods awesomeness, head over to angelfoods.net. We've also got franchise opportunities. So this is a business where you get to work for yourself and make money. Oh my God, best job in the world. There's a free information pack available at angelfoods.net. Also check us out on Facebook and like us. Thank you so much. This is the one tier or Mad Hatter's style cake. Let's go play with some more funky fun. That don't make sense. Funky fun, funky cake.